Dear beautiful people, today I want to talk to you about something I've been touching on this channel a lot, but I have never really explained it in detail, but today I will make my attempt to do so. And the question is, what is actually the ego? Now, when you are born into this world, you have amnesia of who you truly are. This is part of the experiment, this is part of the exercise, but you still as a child have an intuitive knowing that you're belonging into this world and you feel a certain sense of love. But let's say when your parents and the adults around you are indoctrinated within a certain belief system, they will accept or reject you based on this belief system. So certain things that you express, for example, they will punish and certain things that you express, they will reward. Now, when it comes to those punishments, if you, for example, are a quite sensitive and intuitive being and you're being born into a highly materialistic competitive environment, for example, you might experience yeah, that the environment mirrors to you that you're not lovable. Which is not true, but as a child, we want to be loved by our parents and by the adults around you, around us. So what we're trying then is to figure out how to make this possible, how to cope with this. Quickly we learn, well, if we behave in a certain way, we, we get punished. If we behave in a, um, in a way that is expected of us, we get rewarded. So in order not to be cut off from the love of our parents or other adults, we try to adapt the behavior that is rewarded in order to make sure that we get the nutrition, that we get the care that we need as a child, because as a child we're not independent. So then we play this role that is expected of us and this is what later becomes the ego. It is a program, a coping mechanism that we have developed in order to be loved. But in truth, it separates us from love. It separates us from self-love and only with self-love we can realize universal love because they are synonymous. Now, the ego consists of a self-concept, of a belief system that becomes integrated into your consciousness, yeah, later into the unconscious, so at a certain point you're not aware of it anymore. It is a list of things that you think you need to attain or achieve or be in order to be lovable. So suddenly you have learned that love in these societies that are not highly evolved is conditional. So then you might think, well, it's a society that puts emphasis on beauty or materialistic success or certain jobs or traits that you're supposed to develop. Well then, at a certain point, you might try to develop those, let's say, abilities or attain certain skills or to reach a certain ideal of beauty. But this is all stuff that you need to add to yourself. So, you, so then within it is a deep belief of not being lovable. And this is the ego. The ego can only exist within the idea of not being lovable. It needs to, it needs to be in resistance to the universe as a whole. It needs to be trapped in a limited perspective in order to ma maintain the self-concept. Now, a lot of people don't want to let go of the ego for the very simple reason that as it kind of was serving them as they were a child or a teen teenager to be nurtured, to be taken care of. Even though the self-concept was going against their sole purpose or their intuitive intelligence, which created a rift within them. But as a child, I didn't have an option. But the thing is, if we have a habit, for example, of behaving in a certain way, at a certain point, it's so integrated into the way we express ourselves that we're unconscious of where it originally comes from. And since it is such an ingrained habit, it just happens by itself and it manifests a reality that you deep down actually do not desire. Because you are confusing the self-concept or the program in the head with yourself. Many do not want to give up this program or the self-concept because they are afraid when they give it up that they, in a sense, get exiled in society. That they're cut off from love, that they're cut off from food, that they're cut off from survival. So as such, they keep being trapped in the ego and keep playing the role. But this role is a pretender. This is something that we have 
develop to cope with an earlier situation in our life, but once we are adults, adults, it stops serving us. When you are old enough and conscious enough to become the creator of your own story, the ego starts inhibiting you. When we have invested so much into the self-concept, into the story of not being lovable, we think this is who we are. And giving that up, we associate with death. So we're saying, I don't want to die, so I keep my ego alive. And what happens if I give my ego up? But if I give my ego up, I'm afraid of being punished by society, because I experienced punishment as a child. So in order to understand this, the ego is a concept that you have of yourself that is deep down the belief of not being lovable, and that thinks that you need to add certain things or behaviors in order to be lovable. So the ego concept is exactly what separates you from universal love. Because for the source intelligence, everyone and everything in this creation is lovable. That means if you think you're not lovable, you are cutting yourself off from the love of source intelligence. And you and source are one. But when you have a belief that says, well, in this world I'm not welcome. In this world I'm only accepted if I have certain traits or if I own certain things. Well, then you cut yourself off from that love. So as such, you manifest a reality that is about struggle, about grind, about fighting for love. This is something that I can clearly show that happens also when I deal with clients in psychotherapy. If someone, for example, experienced uh, being judged by a very demanding parent, for example, that expresses some narcissistic traits, they have the belief they're only lovable if they're successful, because this is what the narcissistic parent demands. Now, they will attract exactly these kind of partners who support their story, who support their self-concept, so they will pick partners that make them struggle for love. And if they actually experience potential partners that would love them unconditionally, they push them out of their life because they can't believe it, they can't trust that it doesn't fit their self-concept. So as you can see, the ego limits your expansion of consciousness. It cuts you off from source. So as such, it does not serve you. In order to be able to detach yourself from the ego, you need to find the habit that is deeply ingrained within you, the beliefs that you have about yourself. So the judgments, the prejudices that you have towards yourself, and this is where meditation is tremendously useful. Because within meditation, if you watch your breath, you will be able to detach yourself from the thought process and you will see the software running like a movie in front of your mind. So when you see it running, you know what kind of programming is within you and you understand what kind of belief system is, is there and in what way it is limiting you. Now then, you can put in new thoughts. You could put in thoughts of a different polarity. If you, for example, hear that your ego has mistrust towards someone, says, oh, I don't trust this person, right? It's very likely that the, the ego does not trust a certain person because it would lead to, you, to the expansion of your consciousness. And your ego will like those people even though that if they create, even if they create tremendous suffering for yourself as long as they support your self-concept. This is why, for example, a woman who might get beaten by her husband even after she separates, picks another guy who does the same thing, because her story in her mind is maybe since her childhood, I am the victim. So if someone does not treat her as the victim, she doesn't know who she is. So unconsciously, not consciously, unconsciously, she picks a husband that supports that self-concept. So if you have a self-concept, for example, that someone told you in school, let's say a teacher told you, you're never su successful. But the teacher is completely ignorant towards your talents. 
doesn't know what your capabilities are, cannot understand the creative intelligence within you. Well, if you believe that teacher, let's say in life, if there is an opportunity manifesting where you could be successful, you will self-sabotage unconsciously because being successful doesn't fit your self-concept. So as you see, any form of self-concept is a self-limitation. And this is the ego. It is important to drop it by learning to observe it in meditation to understand where are you limiting yourself. Contemplate about that. Be well.